Welcome to Hypnotherapy with Regression Demonstrated, taking a client from I've never met them to they've got the outcomes that they were looking for. Our demonstration subject is CC. This is one out of a series of five YouTube videos extracted from my courses. To get the full versions, get my initial courses, Hypnotherapy Demonstrated and Hypnotherapy with Age Regression on Udemy or at my website for advanced courses and personal hypnotherapy sessions with me. Go to my website, the Past Life Awakening Institute. This is video one of five, the initial interview to assess appropriateness and set a foundation. Welcome to the call, Cece. Good to see you. Thanks for sending in your intake form. And uh, so I just want to welcome you to the call. Thank you. I'm very happy to be here. Great. Okay. So I was happy to see your intake form. You've written it up really well. CC completed an appropriate intake form. So she qualified for the initial call. The intake form is only discussed here. It is given in the full course version available on Udemy or at my website. As we're having this call, it's a free initial call. So the main purpose for me is really just to assess the appropriateness of the sessions. Your intake form indicates that it's likely they're appropriate. We can just talk a little bit more to confirm if they're appropriate because sessions aren't really for everybody. Uh, not everybody has to have hypnotherapy or past life regression, and not everyone has to have it with me. If there are other people you resonate with more or other modalities that I think or we eventually agree are more suited, then I can recommend you that. But if we turn out to be a good fit personally, and if I think the modalities are really going to help with your issues, then we can proceed. And so what was it uh, that inspired you to send in the intake form and think, you know, myself can be a match with this therapist and my issue can be a match? What, what was it that uh, made you think we'd be a good match for the issue and personality? Well, for the longest time, I've, well, not for the longest time, but I noticed that I keep attracting people who seem to have the narcissist they have narcissistic behavior qualities, um, even higher up on the scale than that, sociopathic uh, tendencies. And I keep on allowing these people into my life, into my intimate life on some level. And starting with my mother, who I didn't realize was actually part of this until I learned more about <laughs> all these narcissistic and sociopathic tendencies. And I realized, hmm, okay. So I'm not saying that she is or she isn't, but she has those tendencies, in my opinion. And I've been looking for a long time, wondering what happened maybe in a past life or something like that between lives, a decision I made that that made it so that I attract this. And I've been looking online for for past life regressionists, for, for just someone I resonate with who I feel like could take me to those places where I could actually find out what the lesson is I need to learn and come out of it, you know, stronger, better, and, and freer. Free would be amazing. And um, I really couldn't find anyone I really resonated with. I went on YouTube and listened to a few and it just, it wasn't there. And then when I found you on your website and I saw other examples you had used as well, it, it just went, okay. I see their progress. I see what they've done. And I would love that to be me as well. So that was the main reason. Okay, that's great. That kind of resonance is important. And I'm glad that you've done the research and seen other people. And so you're able to sort of compare, contrast, and, and you've done the homework and you find out this looks like it could be a click. And so you also mentioned there that uh, it's a, a mother is a key figure and a thought that, you know, maybe it's a past life, maybe it's a between lives. One thing about our parents is there was so much experience that we have with them as children, we we're in a little body and that's kind of like a past life, which is hard to even recognize ourselves at five or 10 or to remember anything at three, but we have, we've had years of experience with those people that we can't remember at all. Just like we can't remember a past life necessarily. We can't remember a lot of this life or we maybe do remember it but haven't thought of it as significant. So I'd say it'd be quite interesting to look at regression to a past life, sure. But I'd say, let's have a look at hypnotherapy as well. And so is that something that you're interested in? Or does that make sense to you? And do you think, oh, okay, well, maybe we could do some this life regression as well? It does make sense. Although I, I might add that my first, well, my first memory is bringing my brother home from the hospital and telling the nurse that, no, he's my baby. You can't keep him. Okay. <laughs> she was bringing him to the car. My second memory is 
that of my mom screaming at me, just screaming at me. And I'm only three years old. I, I do remember that. And I remember having no idea and I was in shock that she was treating me that way. And I just ran up to my room and started crying and crying and crying. And I don't know how long it was until she came up and finally apologized that she would never do that again. Um, I, so I was three when that happened. Um, that was my, that's my second memory at all in my life. Um, I don't know if that's okay. Yeah. Well, that's that good. Fits in. Yeah. The one thing I, sometimes people say like, oh, really past life regression is something I want to do. And that may be because they've done a lot of hypnotherapy or therapy mm -hmm. about this life already. So I don't, I certainly don't want to like redo a whole bunch of stuff that hasn't been done. But one thing I'd say is like, let's go into a hypnotic state. Mm -hmm. Let's throw it over to the subconscious mind. If the subconscious wants to bring up some significant things from this life, uh, from a past life, and we ask it to go to this life and it just says, no, not relevant. And it skips to the past life. Okay. That's fine. Okay. But if it thinks actually there's some pretty significant things from this life, and they're going to help you really understand a past life. Are you willing to, or open to looking at some of this life oh, recall yes. as well? Yes, absolutely. Okay. That's great. Some, sometimes people aren't for, 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 for various reasons, some of which don't make sense, some of which do. So, so for that, so that's good. So that's an intent. So then I did ask you this question, you know, have you experienced hypnosis, hypnotherapy? And I asked you, can you enter a hypnotic state? And you said, yes, I have practiced some hypnosis. I believe I can enter a hypnotic state. I don't really have any questions about it. And you said you experienced hypnosis with a group before as a past life yeah. session. And you're able to see some pictures from a time in Atlantis, but you've never had a formal one-on-one -on -one extensive individual interactive uh, regression session. So is that all, that's what you've written. Is that all correct? It's all correct. Yes. And as far as pictures, I was drawing pictures while. Okay. While so was that a kind of her. like a kind of automatic writing kind of drawing? I suppose it was. Um, I just had my paper, my pen there and I just picked up and started drawing. <laughs> okay. So, um, and then we realized afterwards what, what it could have been. So. Right. So that wasn't coming from your conscious mind. That was just, you were just sort of doing something. Your hand mm -hmm. was just doing what it was doing. And you're like, oh, okay, what have I done? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's good. And so, so the key is there, it's coming from the subconscious because you could be having a dream. And then after the dream, you try and draw the dream. But if you're in the middle, if you're in the middle of something and it's just happening, then that's right. So we can say it's your subconscious. You've got an ability to access it. And we can then take that ability and we can really go deep into it. And so you also mentioned you haven't studied my courses. It's nice for the people watching to know you haven't been too conditioned and like done all my courses and know what you're supposed to say. And right. so this, this is all kind of new to you and you're like, I'm not Fresh. quite sure how it works. I'm kind of excited to see what happens. And so that's a nice thing. People can think, oh, you know, you've just done all Mark's courses and you know what you're supposed to say, but that's not really the case, isn't it? It's absolutely true. This is the first time speaking with you. Uh, just, just found your stuff just literally right now. <laughs> so yeah. not literally right now, but you know, in the past couple of days. So, right. um, yeah, that's it. So you haven't Fresh. been doing, you haven't, been, you haven't been doing my courses for the last six months. And nope. now we've assessed the appropriateness of the issue. We can continue on, but now we want to define and refine the issue and get mutual agreement. Now, this is important because she brought up the issue of sociopaths and narcissists. So that's generally, uh, we're looking like a good match still. And then specifically, we can have a look at some of the, the issues. That's why I asked you, you know, what are the issues you want to focus on now? What is your priority? Uh, what issue is causing significant pain that requires a therapeutic resolution? So I'm pretty clear. It's not just, you know, find out some information or who was I in my past life. We're really wanting to deal with uh, uh, significant issues. And so you said, I, why have I repeatedly attracted literal sociopaths and narcissists in my intimate relationship, starting with my mother who seems to hate me. So, so then the first question you said, literal sociopaths and narcissists. So are these terms that you've read about and, and applied to somebody or have they been diagnosed uh, by somebody else? So right. What... Okay. So um, that, that is a very good question. Um, yes, I've, I've, I never knew what a narcissist or a sociopath was until all of this happened. I heard the term thrown around and I thought it was just someone who was selfish, basically. Um, it wasn't until all this was happening and I was reaching out to find out what is going on with me. And, um, and okay, so earlier I said that these people had been diagnosed themselves, but they have been diagnosed 
without seeing them, I've had the doctors diagnose in their terms what what they felt that these people were. So if that makes sense. Um, yeah. And and they were able then to to say what maybe I was going through the PTSD, the CPTSD um, based on what I've been going through. And, and I'm someone who's not biased at all. I will, to the best of my ability, will say what I feel I was responsible for. Like, I, I'm not someone who says, oh no, it's, I, I won't put the blame on anyone else. So I know I just made this question you asked me really, really long. <laughs> um, so yes, the, 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 it's a half, half yes, half no, because they have been diagnosed by a professional, but through me, not through them themselves. That, that's good. And, and did you mention that you've been on a podcast that, that deals with these kind of issues? So you're relating that? Yes, it was a podcast with also a, a, a doctor with a psychiatrist and who sees clients regularly. And I was basically just telling my story. I was in so much pain and so much. I was just in shock that someone could treat someone this way in the way that I was treated. And even though I, I knew it, I felt it, I questioned it, just everything that's typical that you, you read about, about a narcissist or, or a sociopath, everything to the T, it was typical. And so I really needed to get it out and understand what this was and, and, and want to help others who've gone through the same thing and to not remain in victim mode, to, to come out of it knowing that they are, strong they are love they it's just within they need to find it within and depend on themselves for that love first and so it was more about not what was me victim it was more coming out of being a survivor of this type of abuse that was with a doctor or psychiatrist you were discussing mm -hmm. this. it was yes okay so at length so so in this situation he's comfortable did he diagnose or affirm these terms so sociopath and narcissist yes yeah. Yes. Okay. So that's good. And so, and you made a really important distinction. I want to be clear. I'm not a doctor or a psychiatrist. Hypnotherapy, past life regression isn't diagnostic. So it's one that I won't really probably, I won't use myself. The, the, the key thing for me as well is that I've attracted literal sociopaths and narcissists in my intimate relationships. So for me as a hypnotherapist, past life therapist, I won't say, come to me and I will help you deal with sociopaths. Right. But I will say, I, what I can see here is that, you know, there are some relationship issues and that's probably caused you pain, confusion, and let's work together to help understand maybe causative events in the past that you may consciously or, or recall or not, and your subconscious can remind you. And we can just follow out my hip, hypnotherapeutic process, which doesn't rely on or get involved in any technical uh, psychiatric definitions, but we'll just go through our process. And I probably won't use the term sociopath or narcissist going forward but i wouldn't counsel you against it. and if you want to use those terms uh then that that's fine to. okay okay that's great Don't need yeah to. exactly and so i think that's that's a that's a, a benchmark we understand what's going on but we don't need to get too much into it beyond that and and that is very useful to know so i'm curious then now about the timeline so you did mention i didn't even really know they were I'm going to use the term straight away. <laughs> Having said that, <laughs> you didn't even know they were sociopaths or narcissists, mm -hmm. but then it was obvious. And you know, and if one of them apparently is your mother, then at what point did you get that diagnosis? So when did you start realizing? Oh, okay. What? How long ago was it? Oh, well, I always knew that there was something not right. I'm not saying not right with her, but I'm just saying something was not right. But you, you um, meant, sorry, you mentioned there was a point where you, you yeah, started to really research last, and find out about it. In the last couple, in the last couple of years, I would have to say 2019, 2019, okay. 2018, uh, like around in the, in the, the mid 2010, like starting around 2010 and up, but it wasn't until where I started thinking about it. But um, 2019 is when I realized, okay, yeah, yeah, this is, uh, this is okay, what's you, going on. You suspected something in the last 10 years and in the last couple of years, you got a full realization and you're able to go, okay, now I can yeah. put a name on it. And that, can, that clarity can give you a bit of peace. Okay, it's, this is the yeah. kind of, great. So this is the kind of person like, and before that, was there a, a fair bit of self-blame or confusion? 
I I just didn't know that 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 was a a, a a trait. I had no clue. I just thought this was someone who was just always angry and hated me and talked horribly about me and uh, kicked me out when I was ten or eleven years old. <laughs> now even younger. Um, I just I didn't know that there was there was a trait for. A, a, a somewhat so-called disorder when it came to this I just thought that that I was being treated pretty horribly and okay actually can so can I get a bit of a timeline if you don't mind uh, your age now is it mid 40s I'm in my mid 40s yes mid-40s. okay don't and tell anyone <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> I suspected it starting in my mid 30s mm-hmm. but then looking back on it I can think well I was 10 when uh, some things came up and, and I've just had to deal with this pet. Has your mother, and so has your mother been pretty consistent as a personality throughout her life as your Mona? Or, what, or was there a change at some point? There was a change at some point when I was in my 20s, uh, mid 20s. I received a phone. This is, uh, I think I can mention this name, Dr. Phil, um, first came on TV through Oprah. And yep. um, she, I got a phone call. It was a, uh, it was a voicemail and it said, I am so sorry for the way I've been treating you. I, I, I watched Dr. Phil today and I see how badly I've been and how I've treated you. And I'm so, so sorry. And she was crying and I could, I could hear the pain in her crying and, and, the, and I felt that she was so sincere and I'm like, wow, I didn't even rec- know that she even realized that she was doing this <laughs> or that I was feeling this way. And um, so that was when there was a little bit of a change. I was apprehensive about reaching back out, but eventually I did, but always with fear that it was going to boomer, it was gonna go right back to how it was. And um, so I, I disappeared again for a few months. My brother said, "My, your, I mean, mom wants to know why you're not calling her back. And, and then I finally started doing it in a few months, then she just went right back to how she was and okay. uh just got worse and worse and worse again so. okay okay so that so this even 20 years ago you had a she even kind of maybe implicitly recognized oh i've been a little bit narcissistic or sociopathic or selfish or you know unkind mean. <laughs> mean there you go okay so you also mentioned there that you're not you've got a pattern of like not engaging with her so are you in contact with her right now no I'm when not. was the last time you you talked to her? Um, well, the last time I actually talked talked to her was 2019, when she asked me if um, um, about the past. She asked me if I feel like that she was mean to me, <laughs> if she abused me in any sort of way. Yeah. And I said, "Do you really want to know my answer?" <laughs> she said yes, and so I explained to her you know I didn't I wasn't saying you did this you did that it was I feel I feel you know communication was there and oh boy did I get it (laughs) so that was the last time I actually spoke with her um and the last time that I tried to reach out with her I she she's from a different country and I was learning that language on on an app and I was really excited you know I'd text her a little bit like hey one two three four you know and then that kind of stuff and then one of my lessons was was the bathroom you know there's the kitchen and this one's the bathroom and I thought it was just really funny it was cute (laughs) like guess what I'm going to the bathroom and I texted her that and she goes and she just told me I needed to grow up and don't ever send such dirty things to her ever again that I'm the rudest person and I I was just like okay can I can I yeah and that so it was bad that's 2019 I know that texting was just a few months ago oh I I tried to reach out yeah Oh, uh, okay. Uh, can I ask what region of the world? Not necessarily a specific country, and and. Well, she lives in she lives in the state. She just lives a state over. So. Okay. But, um, but but your your heritage or that the language you're learning? Oh, Filipino Tagalog. Okay. Did your parents come over from the Philippines? My dad met my mother while he was in the Philippines, and supposedly she winked at him but she says there was something in her eye that she was trying to get out okay <laughs> and so then my dad sent uh, moved her over to the united states okay so, so were you dad- married okay so your dad's u.s born mm-hmm. 
Okay, and okay, and so and so she came out. So this is actually kind of interesting because, you know, we to understand the mother. You know, what kind of experiences has she gone through? What kind of difficulties? And and can, did she have difficulty uh, adjusting culturally to a new country, the United States? Um, I don't, I don't know. Um, I, I really, I, I don't know. I do know that. Well, what she told me when I was little, what happened to her as a child, and when I brought it back up to her, she said, "No, I never said that." So I have no idea what the truth is anymore. I, I don't know. To be perfectly honest, I can tell you what I thought the truth was, but I have no clue. So you you don't know a lot about your mother's earlier life, or well, or... what she told me at first, I thought I did know, yeah. and then all of a sudden, when she was mad at me, she goes, "I never told you that," and so I don't know what the truth is anymore. Okay, I mean it's interesting. <laughs> I, I'm actually in Asia as we speak, and I've lived here for 20 years, and the culture in Asia and is very different, particularly in the way of raising children which is, you know, America is often a nuclear family and fairly isolated and Asia is often uh, an extended family and many, aunt, many aunt, aunties and grandmas uh, raise the children, you know, and so she would have been brought up in that way and be used to that. And then she comes to the States and is probably in a different culture and isolated from all of those support networks. And then she knew how you raise kids. And then she's in a totally different, in a system where all of the lessons she learned on how you raise kids is destroyed by the fact she's not in that culture. And then things get and she just doesn't know what to do and ends up doing things that are pretty yeah. you know, unhelpful. Does that make sense? Or have you thought about that? I, it, it, it does make sense. Although this is okay. So this is what my mother first told me. And this is what I believed until 2019. Um, her mother, her mother died when she was six and yeah. her father died when she was in her early twenties. She was raised by an aunt who was very, very, very abusive, very mean, um, they were so poor. I mean, my mom was basically the maid. There was, she said that she was so poor that she would brush her teeth with her fingers in the rain. Um, and this is what she told me when I was younger. And this is what I believed the whole entire time. Um, so I, uh, when I brought that up again in 2019, with this conversation I was having with my mom, when she asked me if I felt like she was abusive, um, I, I mentioned that. I said, well, there's a possibility, you know, your your upbringing wasn't from what you've told me wasn't all that great. So it's understandable. She goes, I never said that. <laughs> and I was like, okay, so I don't know what, <laughs> what is real. But so basically um, she also didn't have the traditional um, Asian upbringing either. So yeah, but she does love my brother. Let me tell you. <laughs> uh, so she, well, okay. So she's nice to the bro your brother. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Well, but hates, it. hates his, his girlfriends or wives. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's a very common pattern it may be hard for her to wrap around the idea that, you know did I abuse you as a daughter well compared to the abuse that I had as a child it was nothing <laughs> you know yeah. you, you got it you got your, your abuse level was 10 mine was 100 yes right, yours right. yours feels like 10 out of 10 mine feels like 100 out of 100 but a 10 out of 10 feels like as bad as it gets but compared to 100 you're like and so yeah. that that can be part of the the, the, the many um misunderstandings but you know as you say as well uh she was able to overcome all of that and be nice to, to the brother and, and not to me so you know come on so okay but this is, is interesting and how appropriateness of hypnotherapy as a modality we still feel she's appropriate and the issue is appropriate for spiritual regression but is that regression to this life a past life between lives now we can assess that one thing with age regression is it's useful to regress to the specific events you said your first memory was being screamed at and mm -hmm. so that's that's a significant thing and and then it can be pretty interesting as well to understand the you know and so there is a gulf of understanding between the two of you and 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 she you're trying to bridge that but every time you do she gets triggered and goes back on the attack again so there's you you've tried to do it with her and it hasn't really gone well and so, so this is uh, this is useful to know, particularly about uh, you know relationships in general that can be causative issues and patterns in relationships. And so, in a sense, there's sort of you know your, the way she you were brought up, the way she was brought up, there are very different patterns, but then they may repeat. And that she sort of learned, you know, you can be mean and abusive, and that's just sort of how it goes. And then she just repeats whatever she was taught and applies it in her situation, even though that doesn't make any sense. She's not, you know, you can take all of the, the, uh, the culture and the, the, just the way of doing things from another country, 
But when you apply it in, in a different country, it just completely does not work. And it's a problem. It's not a problem there. It is a problem here. Right. You know, in fact, you're, you're probably mollycoddled according to her, but, you know, abused according to the different context. So just that, that can be, and the, that can be a metaphor for kind of, you know, in this life, it, it doesn't make sense that they'll attack me. But in the past life, they attack me again, or actually I was the one that attacked them. So it all balances out. Well, the culture in the past life is completely different. So they, there can be parallels there, which can be interesting. So it sort of does make me, and we may be at a, it may be useful to look at age regression to understand more about this. Uh, and, or it may be that the subconscious takes us through past life regression. Who knows? We can see, but it does tell me that there's, uh, there may well be interesting things to explore in, in this life stuff. And so, you know, we, and I like the fact there that, you know, even with these definitions from before, you know, uh, there can be patterns in relationships. Uh, and, and you're willing to take responsibility and wonder about your part in it. And so mm -hmm. it's not about blaming somebody else. And like, oh, it's about wanting to understand. And when, uh, and to do this, that when you take responsibility, it gives you the ability to respond. And when you really explore, you know, instead of like me, my pain, they've got to stop hurting me. It's like, well, I'm in pain. They were, they were also in pain. They're coming from a place of pain. What can I do to understand mm -hmm. more? We've got a shared pain and how can we both overcome it? And if she's not able to overcome it, she's just going to keep, she's trying to. There's, and we had this little window of intent where in, your, in the twenties, she was trying to overcome her pain and be nice. Yeah. Her pain overwhelmed her. And for the last 20 years, she hasn't managed it, but, you know, and she's trying. And so even you hadn't talked to her for, two years but you had even tried to text back and must have been a couple of nice texts of oh that's nice you know some and that's cool but then her pain overwhelmed her and she went on the attack again and then it's you know so it's interesting patterns and some you know intense and some causes and some you know why are things like this and a number of things that we could sort of get into uh, so does that make sense it does it makes a lot of sense yes is that something that you had thought of before that, oh, we'll talk about this kind of stuff or going into that will be helpful? Or did, did you not thought about it? Or do you think it talking about it now, oh. do you think, oh, it's actually quite a good idea or? No, this is, I was hoping that um, because I didn't know how to explain it in, in the intake form. Um, but what I was trying to explain is that because this, I feel like this has started happening I mean, when you're a baby, what could you have possibly done to make your parent hate you um you know so i feel like this had to have been something from from the past or had to have been something some kind of agreement in between um things that have happened subsequently as, as i get older then a lot of it i know must have to do with this this life as well you know with with my behavior but when you're a little tiny baby what could you have possibly done wrong but be born i so yeah it's i i thought about it if that answers your yeah. question okay so main thing yeah it is it's a good question it's on the table as you know what are these causes and you know what's affecting our relationship and yeah so so you know we so even i i had skewed this form a little bit you know with uh, past life regression actually we can assume past life regression but any past life is always going to be looking at uh basically the whole point of going to the past is to understand this moment mm -hmm. why am i acting in this way in this moment why and you know possibly why is she and they may have causes and we can get some of the answers possibly in this life and quite possibly in past lives as well mm -hmm. but the main thing the whole reason we're doing all of this is not so that we like answer the question or know why and so that we can get the effect which is you know peace mm -hmm. and and whatever else it would it would it would be there. but we'll get on to you know what we're wanting but we can acknowledge what we have now which is and the effect so you mentioned and describe a specific moment I asked in the last few weeks to illustrate your issue that is causing pain. So pain is the key, suffering, and what you saw of it. And so then you state very nicely or uh, well, you know, the, the main issue, the issue, like the consequence of it is this pain of loneliness, a feeling of not belonging on the planet um, at this time. And so if you're born into a, into a mother who doesn't seem that interested or is negative, then you can wonder, well, what, why did I even get born? And then that can translate to an adult sense of what i'm even doing on this planet. now you mentioned lies told about me friends i thought were friends playing nasty mind games slander job loss nothing specific is happening but my intuition feels something's off 
And so then it's like, I don't know if there's a PTSD, a paranoia, but a dark cloud over my life. So these are all significant issues. And to solve it's them. Paranoia. Yeah, it's, yeah. Just as I'm reading them, I just got to think, you know, is this issue significant? Would it be valuable to solve? And how is it affecting, our, you know, the past is the past. How is it affecting our current behaviors? Is there anything you'd add to that? Basically, I was just saying it's, most of the time, I all together as a person, I'm this happy-go-lucky person. I've got rose-colored glasses on, whether that's a good thing or not. I enjoy looking at the world like that. Okay. That's one reason why I feel like maybe I wasn't, I was born at the wrong time because I can remember since my first adult experience being disappointed by adults. I mean, I don't know what I had it to base off of. I don't know what my, what my the main subject was, you know, what I had to compare it to, but I would just remember feeling very disappointed. I'm like, this is how adults behave. <laughs> um, and just even to this day, I'm still in shock about how people can treat one another through even friends, even and neighbors. I'm in shock. And I'm not saying I'm perfect at all, but I I don't have a malicious bone in my body. I honestly don't. I might have some selfish bones in my body where I want to make things happen, but malicious, no. Um, and I, I just, it, I just feel like I was not born. And people tell me I'm too nice, and they don't believe what they think I have ulterior motives because I'm too nice. I'm like, no, I, I'm. This is just me. I don't know how to be any other way. Um, and that attracts a lot of people who like to take advantage of me. <laughs> so, right. Okay. Makes sense. Do you have any spiritual theories or ideas on why that may be? Uh, what I'm thinking, I, I, I'm think I'm, 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 I'm kind of like blurring the lines between spiritual and, and past life, if it's the same thing or not. Um, but I do feel that maybe in a, I'm not, I don't believe in karma too much anymore. Um, I believe that, that wisdom and changing the ways of your behavior can trump any karma. Um, yeah. But I feel like I must have either in a past life been this horrible person, this dictator or something, this awful queen, or I don't know, um, just who's not nice to people. And I'm slowly learning and getting the lessons back. But this lifetime, I really feel like I've learned that. <laughs> But I don't know if it's the truth. Um, if we were to go forward from here on out, I feel like, yes, I've learned my lesson. But it doesn't stop me from feeling the paranoia and the... Yeah, that's... That, oh. um, another thing I was thinking, too, is that maybe in between... I made a, a, a decision or an agreement, a contract or something with, with, with someone that said, okay, this is what you're going to be this lifetime. And this is how I'm going to be with you this lifetime, or this is what you're going to experience this lifetime. And I agreed to it. Um, okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's good. I've got a little theory I might share with you later, but I let, let's, uh, let's see if it comes out on its own, but that's good. And so, uh, so for now you've got, so there is this tendency to be like happy, see things through rose colored glasses, have a, have an expectation that things are at a higher sort of nice level and then are just a, a yeah. shock surprise disappointment when you know this world every is a bit every single time yeah okay every so... single time why don't i not remember that this is what happens why do i go to reset happy again and then i'm hurt i feel hurt as if it was the first time well that's a <laughs> this is the next point so there are behaviors at the moment which is i shut down a little bit too late and so there are behaviors, patterns, like in response to this, these feelings, these thoughts, then there are behaviors. So, and then there are choices you actually can make. A lot of people are literally born for the first five years, everything's fine. And they're surprised that not everyone in the world loves them unconditionally like the family did. <laughs> and then they spend the rest of their life sort of, or they break up with their boyfriend when they're 18, they get their heart broken and now they don't trust anyone ever. And their new behavior is to never trust anyone and to that's it, they give up on love or whatever it is. So there are choices to make. You know, the world can be a, a cruel place. Do you then shut down completely and try and avoid it? Or do you uh, say that's a bit of an overgeneralization? There are good people in the world like me. And if I can connect with them, then everything be, can be fine. And we can just, you know, not get involved with the others. So what behaviors would you like to start doing? It's like fear. Fear is not necessarily a good or a bad thing, 
some fear protects us and is appropriate, mm-hmm. but we've got to decide, you know, what level is appropriate and what level is inappropriate. So how would you want to balance that? You know, being too trusting, being too shut down. Can you imagine, oh, I've just got to be, stay being super open and, and take the bumps or I can find a middle, or I've got to shut down and protect myself from these people, which I might've started doing a little bit. Right. That's what I've started doing. I, I, um, I finally, I guess I was pushed pushed over I'm not saying by anything just I allowed myself to be pushed over that wasn't my body's or my psyche's natural response was just to go pull myself way back um uh, to isolate myself and to hide um I do force myself to be around people by a a, an evening part-time gig that I have that that is a lot of fun but um I would like to just feel free I would like to think like everyone else does where no one or maybe they're just hiding it i i honestly i i I just want to be i i honestly i don't have an an answer for that because i don't i just want to be free from this prison from this dark cloud of sludge that is now around me that i'm that is i'm not used to that i i don't recognize okay that's a good subconscious answer so your emotions are coming up there you're using metaphoric language so it's hard to give a good right conscious answer but you feel it you know what it is the tears can come out and they can start to cut through some of the sludge or the mud or whatever has been encoding you and and you know that there's something inside of you that's not that so you said i don't really recognize the sludge as myself which is, which is helpful because a lot of people can start to get confused and think they are their armor or the, the, the mud or the sludge or whatever it was, was holding them back. If you can imagine washing that away, getting rid of the weight of that, cleaning off the residues and, and mud of it. And so now you said I've, you, you, you articulate it well in your form. And so like I'd had developed some social anxiety, but I sort of pushed through that and, and do, uh, do some stuff where I force myself to go out and be around people in some of these social musical events. So there's an intent there. I, I, you know, you could just say, look, I just want to be able to be on my own, be in my box and stay away from people, but be happy with that. You know, or you could say, look, I just want to go out and be totally social. There's some balance in between. And it seems like you're, and it seems like your, your natural being, this core of myself is free and that's free to go out and do a lot of stuff. Uh, but not to be overly overwhelmed or hurt by the slings and arrows that may come along with that. Are you a more social type person? Uh, in general, by nature, I'm more of an introvert. Um, but when I'm when I'm out, I, it's it's because I choose to be out and I enjoy being where I am, and um, and them being around people is amazing. Um, Great. Yeah, uh, a lot of people come to my house and I feel extremely uncomfortable and I hide. So it's it's a it's a give or take, especially if it if something just happened that's that's triggering me, then then it doesn't matter what I do, I'll just hide. <laughs> okay. Okay, that's good. So like if there's a shift within myself that can give me the freedom to do that, having some of that balance. Does that sound right? Yeah. Yeah. It sounds like a great place to be. <laughs> Better than where it is now. Okay. Gathering information and setting intentions. This is how we close out the initial interview. So we're now talking a little bit about just, you know, yourself living your life as an adult. And you mentioned some social anxiety in the past. I don't feel like I started having social anxiety until um, probably 12 years, 12 years ago, 13 years, 12, 11 years ago is when I started having social anxiety. And I know, I know now looking back, I know why uh, or how it may have come about um well, actually there, how was that um this is where i gotta shut my door okay. <laughs> a little bit more um uh i i got into a relationship and this relationship was very I, again i didn't i didn't know at the time what uh, what abuse meant or what emotional abuse meant or anything like that I just felt like it's something that needed to be dealt with and I guess because of my training from my mom 
<laughs> I call it training. Yeah. Um, that, um, but I lost who I was altogether. I, I became a shell of myself where I completely isolated myself. Um, I hid, hide in the bathroom. I get made fun of for hiding in the bathroom and not sticking up for myself from this person. Um, I just became a shell of myself. And then just a couple, like just last year or just the past few years, or starting on my, on my 40th birthday, you know what? I'm going to go to Thailand. I'm going to go take a trip by myself for my birthday. I'm going to treat myself to go to Koh Lipa. And yep. last minute I went and I had the best time. Um, and that was the first time that, that I really felt like, okay, I'm, I'm now going to start doing stuff on my, on my own um, without worrying about being in trouble or, or anything like that. So that was four five years ago that, I kind of finally started coming out a little bit of this who am I shell so okay that's great that's a good example and that's a that's a memory and experience uh, a symbolic time that we uh, can know about this kind of thing we might might may regress to can I ask that relationship has is that over that 12 year one I would I guess I would have to say on on paper, yes, but technically, no. I, I, I still live in, in the house by default in a way. Yeah. And the means to move have not quite come together yet, but hopefully that's going to be happening in the beginning of this next year. Okay. Okay. So you're still living with that sign of that person? I've moved back and forth. Um, okay. I, is it kind of like roommates or is it still a bit of a it's, romantic connection? No, 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 no romantic. Um, from his, from his end, he will behave as if it is. Um, but okay. then is he the seeing other people? second, it's not, um, he can. But does he? I don't know. I don't okay. know. I, I don't ask. I don't. Okay. It'd be quite easy to know if he was in the house. So like, it, it's not obvious. Oh, he doesn't, not... he doesn't bring, he, there's no, he doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't live here. Yeah, he's he's a bro. He he he's into his bros. <laughs> okay, but he, he does he does live in the house full time. Yes. Yeah. Okay, this is a bit concerning. Being into the <laughs> how into the bros is he? <laughs> he's a he's a guy. He's a dude's dude. Okay. <laughs> Just say it that way. This is because like F, um football, UFC, you know, wrestling. That's what that okay. was. <laughs> okay. Okay. Okay, interesting. Okay, so like he might even think that you're in a relationship, and he but, knows though. He says it yeah. to me that he knows he doesn't. He'll say that, but then he acts different. It's yeah. a mind. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. And I try not to put any weight on it because I know in my heart and what it is, but I also have to be sensitive to. Well then, it does that is that blocking you from meeting other people? Like, do oh, you I don't. Feel... I don't need to. I don't need to meet people right now. I'm good. Sure. Okay. <laughs> but yes, I mean, if it, it, it would say, say I wanted to, yeah. um, out of respect, because I do live here, I would not. So. Okay. And so, is that something like, let's say you move out uh, next year? Is it? Are you? And let's say some of this uh, darker stuff is cleared. Uh, are you interested in relationships in in general, or is that something you possibly yeah, think? Oh, I mean, be nice. Yeah, I'm I'm interested, but it's not it's not something that oh I have to have. <laughs> you know, I'm right. perfectly okay being by myself. Um, but yeah, the ideas cross my mind where it'd be nice to be in a a mutually respect you know just just empowering relationship. Yeah, yeah, of course. But I'm, I'm not I'm not looking for it. It's not a mandatory. So okay. Okay, so not looking right now. Sometime in the future, sure, maybe. Um, but let's probably, let's yeah, let's deal with some. Let's uh, got other priorities to deal with that in mm -hmm. first. So let's just get those done. So that makes a lot of sense. Right. Okay. So so then so then some of the outcomes. What would you like to get as a consequence of this? So uh, I'm consequence a consequence powerful... sounds so mean. It sounds well, so sorry, bad. sorry. Is it, what, what outcomes would you like to get? So you even mentioned like I'm a powerful mm -hmm. sort of woman. Uh, why can I not reflect it outly? 
And so that that's already it. I just I'm a, I know I'm a powerful assertive woman on the inside. Let me just be and act that uh, in daily life. And said I'm almost ashamed of myself at times. So you know yeah. let's let's not have that. Let's be proud of ourselves. Let's be present and uh, and and enjoy. Here I am. I'm ready to enjoy things, and I would fit this my authentic, happy, rose-colored glasses self. I just want to be that. Yeah. So you, you said I want to be that. Yeah. Yeah. So you've... um, I've been told that by my father that, and by so many different people. Um, well, not so many people call me naive. My my father said you are extremely smart, but you're yeah. really naive to how the world works. <laughs> Right. is what he's told me and this was a couple years ago and then um, numerous times I've had people tell me that you are so different but they aren't able to tell me why um, yeah. so I'm guessing maybe that different part is maybe what is keeping me separated from from really being quote unquote a normal person who knows how to handle things knows how to handle these emotions maybe not take things personally and I, I don't think I'm taking things personally I'm um, being an empath I take on a lot of people's you know I absorb a lot of people's emotions and I take that on as my own um, but ideally I would just like to be able to go out and and if something happens just like okay that happened cool. <laughs> you know bounce off my shoulder and I know how to handle it like a normal person does and not be paranoid and okay i would love it if normal people could do that all the time so i think this is might be your rose colored view on what normal people are <laughs> most people get pretty offended by small stuff as well so <laughs> I de the, the definition of normality and what you're comparing to is interesting but i absolutely hear what you're saying yeah this is sort of i said something similar earlier if i can just go out uh, enjoy the world as it is and uh, if uh, let things bounce off not take it personally and I, I think that and to be that powerful assertive woman enjoying things and be authentic and have a positive view on life and not to have that be something which has negative painful consequences be assertive so. and without pe people thinking that I'm being selfish because for some reason when I'm right. being assertive even in the nicest way people then start saying she's not as nice as she thinks she is and I'm just like ah. oh. <laughs> so I I, I, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> that, okay. And I so just that, figure it's like everything together. Okay. So that you mentioned people playing little mind games. Uh, mm -hmm. And that's, that's one of them. So it's a good illustration of the kind of mind games and the traps we could fall into. And then we take that seriously and, all, and then on, then off we go. So, mm -hmm. so that's good. So it's good to know that pattern. It's good to know what's happening. It's good to know what we'd like to happen instead. And so, yeah, so for now, I think we've, that's a really good basis. Uh, there's a, a, a process, a structure that we can go through that can pick up uh, on a lot of the things you've given me, information that I can use and apply in a hypnotic state. But it's really useful to go through this stuff uh, consciously and to sort of set a frame and to have an intent and to be thorough. Uh, so we've done that. So in fact, and so that, so for me, I think we've gone through this intake form really well. Is there anything that you wanted to add that maybe you hadn't written down on the form at all or anything that you'd want to that you'd want to uh, add um no we, we we basically spoke about the whole gps thing how i'm able to <laughs> to tell you where like the constellation is um yeah. like beetlejuice my girlfriend asked me where's beetlejuice and i'm like i don't know and i just point and we look it up and i'm like oh there it is I'm like whoa <laughs> You know, just stuff like that. And I, like, I had no idea where, and I, I still don't know. Like, I couldn't tell you where the sun is right now because I, I'm also mixed up in my house, whatever, blah. I'm okay. not a ditz, I promise. I just <laughs> don't remember that kind of stuff, so. I believe you. <laughs> okay, that, okay, that's good. So, so for now, we'll just uh, have a look at some of the, I've got terms and conditions on the website, following the instructions, uh, being ready. And then, so just a, a couple of things. Uh, do you have any, do you use uh, drugs or alcohol uh, at all or, or much? Or Friday that... nights. Friday okay. nights I drink at okay. my work. Okay. So that's about it? I drink a little bit uh, a little... on Friday nights. Okay. So <laughs> I'll, not... I'll have probably like 10 drinks every okay. Friday night. Okay, yeah. that's good. Friday night's party night. That's fine. Okay, and so, mm -hmm. but no, 
uh, no issues they're not in a recovery program or no, uh, anything no. like that okay and uh, medical diagnosis that no existing conditions medications that you're on nope none okay i uh, was diagnosed with add years ago but i never picked up my prescription so okay Although yeah. I always wonder how the world would be if I was actually focused. It must be a wonderful place. <laughs> okay. Okay. And so are you doing any other therapies at the moment? Any other sessions? No, just self-reiki. Okay. That's good. Okay. So sometimes concurrent or simultaneous things are mm -hmm. not necessarily indicated. And so now, so the technical aspects, you've got a great mic. And actually, uh, but when we do sessions, are you able to be in a reclining place? Where 25 you can degree angle. There you go. Okay. And yeah, are you able to, have you got a boom where you can put the mic down so it can, there you go. Exactly. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. So I would move this to an appropriate, to a, a better place. So with, okay. with the lighting still and, and everything where I'll be laid okay. back. Okay. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Okay. Great. So all those technical aspects look good. You're coming through clear, looking good. And so then, so then the next step, so we've gone through consciously, uh, some of the intense issues, possible causes, some of the things we've talked about may turn out to be relevant and we go deeper. Some of them maybe we take a note and they never sort of come up uh, in a hypnotic state, but it's sort of good to know and just be thorough. And then it's interesting, you know, your spirit guides uh, are, are there and giving uh, consent. And so we can have an idea. There's a process I can take people through. And, but part of it also is eliciting the wisdom and, and seeing what happens. So I'd say uh, it'd be pretty useful to do some age regression to some of these mm -hmm. early life events uh, but particularly with the mother and then even with the relationship from, you know, 12 years ago, that's still kind of got a, uh, not, an, not a hundred percent resolved for various reasons, but I think it'd be pretty useful to just understand some of those patterns. We may get into depth on those and that could take up a number of sessions. That could be a springboard in which we go into some past life or between life stuff, who knows, but I think it'd be pretty useful actually to, to do some hypnotherapy related to that. So is that agreeable to you? Yes, it is. Okay. Okay. And so, so I'll, I'll have a little bit of a catch up interview again before our first formal session, but maybe we talk for 10 minutes or something and then get into a hypnotic state and, and let the subconscious and superconscious uh, really get involved. So does that, uh, so overall what we've talked about, does that sound like a good plan? Are you ready to proceed with that? I am ready. It sounds like a great plan. Yes. Okay. Fantastic. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so we'll schedule, uh, call for the next time but uh, for now you know uh, great to meet you for this first time and look forward to continuing on uh, with the journey yes same here thank you mark i appreciate it